Hi, this is uh, Koiru with uh, a new video for you. I won't promise that it will be a short one this one because I think it will be rather long. We try to wrap up as much as we can about the Omega MSX build and we have to drag out the, the scope to, um, to finish finding the fault of, um, of this build. But first we are going to try the things that we yeah, we made a, a summary last video about some of the things we have to try. We have to try to um, to change the, the 74 uh, um, LS 32s to F 32s if it's the timing in the ship select. Because I saw some glitches there, but they might, yeah, they might should be there. It's very difficult to know by these 8-bit designs because the timings are, yeah, it's very close timings on some things. And it's also the message that I got from this message board is 82C55 that we could try to um, to swap those chips. I actually got now two chips from uh, from China that we can try. I also have the capacitors that we just bodged in fixed capacitors. We did ch uh, check all the frequencies uh, in the oscillators and they was okay, but we still have to solder in the, the ship uh, or the, the capacitors that should be there and it was 30 pico adjustable capacitors so i won't do any uh, spoilers but just watch along and see the process until we finish this uh, video today there will be a follow-up to this series one other episode otherwise this will be far too long Yeah, we are back at the bench again with um, the MSX2 Omega and today I have got these China things and this is um, 74F32s and if you remember back a few episodes I did have the thought that the timing on these uh, 74 F32s was needed to get some straight edges on the timing signals on the ship selects. And some of you have written me back and said that you have got this to work with using ordinary LS32s and that's probably right. And But in the schematic it is stated that it should be F so I was thinking of trying that. And I also got this from China and these looks like new parts they have not been yeah what should I say it looks like most of the China parts that I get these days it looks like the the legs are thinned but the print does look okay and we will review these afterwards so first I will test these F's and then I will test to change this 8250C55 ship and this is also something that was mentioned in uh, one of the earlier videos that there has been people that has been building this that has not been able to get this to work with yeah some 82 C55s but has and has gotten the same errors message that I did the, the out of memory uh, error and so I'm going to to test this too but first I'm going to check I still have all the the LS ships in the other sockets and I do have the F's up here like last time so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take these 74 32s here and change them for F's and see what happens and of course I need to change the voltage on my power supply to 5.1 volt so that I have that okay and is able to just plug that in and I need to connect my um, sampling device for the composite video like so yeah I just pry out the um, old chips with uh, a screwdriver and this is high quality socket so I Expect them to last at least 10 more chip changes. You know, the question is, as always, I have some China chips. Should I test them? And I think I will. Yeah, so I'm just going to, um, to see if these are legitimate chips or not. This is something else. It's um, 
gift wishing you all the best with the project and this is a 7440p and two leds i've never seen that before if things are dirt cheap i don't expect to get gifts look legitimate yeah first I cast they do they, they have the same physical appearance every one of them and the print looks okay yeah and the auto find feature found this as a 7432 so then this is okay yeah and then let's quick test the other chips by using the auto find feature if that's okay the ship is generally okay Otherwise we have to test it in the retro ship tested pro, but I don't think we need that for such a simple ship. So I have four working 74 F32s, and of course I can only guess that these really are Fs, but they do look legitimate and they have not been soldered on the legs, and all the, the ships looks exactly the same. And let's just try them. Like so, and I have to to change and turn on the capturing device, and I have made the power available here. Yeah, and it waits straight into the original memory not found message. I have not done anything else on this board, and I do have one of the original rooms in here i have several yeah versions of the msx2 c prom and i also had some original stuff in here i can test that again with this jumper there was some flickering on screen but nothing else is happening In the same setting, we are going to test this, and I can't again fail to tell you how I dislike this kind of shipment. This was just put in an ordinary bag and nothing else. And here you see that the two ships, they are soldered on the legs you can see that this is two different chips they have a, a bit of different shape on the legs and you can see that these are either desoldered or reused and that's okay and here you can see they have a different code on the bottom 33 f3 and 33 and 14 and when i put them like this you can see that this is two different versions of this ship, at least a different print. 0821 and 0817. Yeah, at least it's two chips I can test. What I have here now is a Uki chip that I had in stock and it did work in some other arrangement, but that was not testing all the ports. Yeah, we can we can test. Oh, these legs are far too wide. Like 
Let's test it like so. Thing should be inside. This is really long legs, so it doesn't fit to the bottom of the socket. We've seen that before. And let's try again. Of course, memory not found. But if that can be a, a relief, I'm just not swapping ships at the random here even though it, it looks like this this is based on advice from some other guys test from um, the internet and comment made to me but I will uh, yeah I can test with, with this ship too and then I will and of course it's the same. I will just show you something. You remember last time we tried with another CPU too then and it gave the same result. But if I try without this ship it doesn't work at all so it does do something in the startup. And I'm not sure how this BIOS is written but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this um, 82C55 back in and I'm going to see if I can find there is a Philips BIOS ROM that should fit in the flash socket. And when I say Philips BIOS ROM I of course mean the Philips Diag ROM that's meant to be used for diagnosing MSX machines from Philips. There are some reports that this actually boots and gives some messages on uh, this main board. So I will try to, to see that and I will flash it on one of these ROM ships and see if it works. I think the one that is out there on the net is, is 16K but you sold that by burning the same ROM several times on these ships so that it will be addressed even though it's not hitting the right address decoding at once. So I just take it and make as many mirrors as I need to get this going. Yeah, this is my old stock ship going in again. And as you can see, it's the memory not found message. Yeah, and of course I, I do have some other things to try. And that is also with the timing issues. I've got the capacitors that can replace these just bodgy ones that I just soldered in here. So that will also be something we try in this video. I had difficulty finding three of the right kind that was the same as the vendors, so I ordered this from AliExpress. Kind of cheap, but it looks okay. I should have thought of it of running this uh, past my um, Peak Tech 2170 capacitor meter, but I will do that uh, at a later time to check if these are accurate components. I just botched these capacitors in here, but I did measure with the scope that this was pretty accurate spinning these oscillators but we will recheck this with the scope when I have soldered in these like so yeah since I bodged this on just on the top of the PCB I now have to clean out uh, the holes and the easiest way to do that is by some solder wick I could have used of course use the desoldering gun but just now it's done in the shed so let's use the good old method instead these probably are on the very cheap side it's um, a kit I bought from Aliexpress I also bought some other stuff in from 
from Oser, but um, I used them on some other project and I can't, couldn't find the rest, so I just ordered these new. And then it's just to solder in the caps. We can't use too much these because this is mostly plastic. And the caps that I used before was 20 pico, so we should these do some dialing in, but that can wait. Yeah, like so. Yeah, let's just plug it in and do a straight test. And we can do the scope later and dial in the capacitors if the frequencies are off. The memory not found error appears again. But um, then I will take the scope and I will measure the, the frequencies around these crystals to see what they swing on. And this is for the real-time clock and only that, I think. This is for the video frequency and this chip. And this is for the, the CPU PAL frequency, I think. So I will be measuring out all of these on the, the scope. Yeah, and we first measure this PAL frequency. And this could be measured on pin 4 here, on this 7404. Oh, and this is actually way out. I do think this should be 4.4 .4 something megahertz. And it's drifting. Yeah, I will take a scope picture for you to see. I don't have any plastic adjusters for this, so I do have to adjust a little bit and take it away. I know it's drifting sometimes up against 4. It's on 3.58 MHz just now. And here come some of the shortcomings of this uh, software that I use for my regular scope to capture the, the screen. I can only take single screenshots, otherwise the video is so, so bad and so lagging that you can't see any good pictures at all. And this is on a really powerful PC. So there probably are something wrong in my setup, or there are something with this software that does not compute. Normally this capacitor is easy to make the crystal swing on its main frequency, but I can't be able to do that here. But then I come to think of something. I had not measured this frequency after I changed from the HET circuits, so I have not seen this on the LS and other circuits that I changed them with in an earlier video. It's not doing what it should. I have to check the values of the components around this and I'm also going to change this 74S04 to something else. And now I'm replacing this with the same ship that uh, was in here first. And the socket will stand this kind of change a couple of more times before I need to take precautions with the socket. This is uh, HCT04. It's a lot less power draw in this one, so we have to see what happens then. No, it actually is 4.42 megahertz, and that was certainly an error. But at least now this is 4.4. And this signal looks really stable and, and sturdy, and it's also a good square wave. The ringing in top of the, the front of the, the raising edge of the, the pulse is probably due to some misconduct on the earth wire of the scope leads, or there is some misadjustment of the capacitance in the scope lead. Yeah, so that's a good result for that one. And then it was next. See if I can grab a word on that one. I might have to, to see where I best can measure this one down here. It's a bit difficult to measure because it's stated that this ship here should take the crystal on the two last pins. And the reason I call it difficult is because of the schematics you see that there is no buffer on the um, 
oscillator so I can't see any buffered outputs on this so it's only meshing over the crystal itself and that's a low signal and you also risk to affect the swinging oscillation by putting your scope probe to it but as you can see this is a nice and sturdy signal of 21.4 MHz so this is okay I think and we have the last clock here and it's going into this clock ship and it should be on pin 16 and 17 on this one and this is a, it's an 18 pin chip yeah and this also looks quite good it's a clear 32.7 kilohertz uh, signal so this also looks good so we're back we have measured the frequencies and we have measured other things and i'm going to go back to the schematic and see what else we can measure on this actually notice this jumper here is should be closed for european keyboard style That didn't do any good, of course. Yeah, here are some tips from the GitHub about troubleshooting this board. And some of these we have already uh, messaged. The, the clock signal here on U3, the uh, video processor, we have messaged. We have also measured the same signal from the CPU. The address zero signal on the CPU on pin 30, we have already measured that, but we are going to measure this again, of course. The read and write signals on the CPU is also a good measurement. Uh, probably when we are in this state, when we have this memory, it's probably just the read signals we are going to see, but anyway. The memory read on signal U26. It's a good indicator. The room ship select and ROM ship select signals. This is a bit difficult to trace actually because there's a lot of decoding done on the ROM, but the room ship select and the RAM ship select, we have already done some measurements on this, and I do find some strange thing on the, the ROM ship select signal. We can go back to that later. And, and this is of course connected directly to the flash room and um, the static RAM ship. And these signals go low every time a C the CPU access the, the flash room or SRAM of course. Because if the ship select is not selected, the, these ships are tree-stated from the bus. And these other signals here is just if you don't get any video output, we do get the video output. So we do know that this clock is running. We also know that this signal, this was the first we measured, so we do know that this signal is okay. And the same with these signals, we don't need to check them for what we are doing here now. So what we will concentrate on, we will measure these signals and see that they are present, but we won't do anything else in this regard until we have measured all the signals through so i'm just going to show you the the signals as i measure them and do a fast forward uh, on the video while i do so and we follow the steps in the guide so the first to measure is the cpu clock on pin 6 of the cpu and as you can see this is totally okay Maybe it should be a bit more squarish, but this is certainly not the worst clock I've seen on a set 80. And I know I said I follow the guide, but it makes more sense to take the signals around the CPU first. And uh, pin 6 on the CPU and the pin 8 on the VCP, they should be connected anyway. And as we see, this is the A0 signal on pin 30 and it's totally okay. And twin, pin 21, the read signal, that is as I expected, it's totally fine, but as we see here when we go further along to the pin 22, that's the write signal, it stays um, high, and the reason for that is of course in this state when the CPU don't find any me memory, it doesn't make sense to write anything. I also try to provoke some action on the right line by uh, cycling the power to see what happens on startup. But as we can see, it just follows the power cycle and it's nothing more. 
that's going on on this. Yeah, the next in line is um, U26, that is uh, 74. 245 that is octal bus transceiver with three state outputs and used to determine the direction of the write or reads on the data bus. And I think this signal looks totally fine. And on the next step, I actually deviate a bit from the plan because the ROM zero select signal that comes from uh, and it goes to the U7 is actually taken through the U32 that is um, 7438 and this is a, a special select chip that also is doing most of the hard work for the um, memory banking for the chip and selecting the memory size and this signal comes in as the ROM select so I choose first to measure and concentrate on this signal to see if I find something there then I don't have to measure pin 22 on the U7 and as you can see, it's really nothing there. It stays high, and I even try to power cycle, but it doesn't change anything. There is no ongoing pulse strain on this at any point. And we are approaching the bottom of the list. This is the last of the logic signals that we should um, test, and this is the ship select of the room ship. And as we can see, it looks totally fine. So I think we just uh, go on and measure the last two signals uh, for the video clock also before we finish this measurement round. And the next in line for measuring out is pin 10 and 6 on uh, U47. And both these signals is um, about the, the clocking of the, um, the video circuit. The first is uh, 15.734 uh, kilohertz. And the second one we have a uh, PAL, so it's 4.4 megahertz. And that we have already measured out, so I expect them to be there. I know we have the only suspicious thing that happens to us, and that is the um, drum chip select on pin 22 on um, U7, that is the memory chip. And this is something, this is a signal that is, is made, it's not direct from the CPU. And this signal comes from the drum select that is part of the signal that is decoded in U13, that is a GAL chip. And there might be something strange happening around here. All these um, signals is uh, meant to be part of the decoding of this ship. So, as an experiment, I'm just going to, um, to take the U32 out of the equation. So, I'm just going to bypass this uh, ship by connecting a lead from the RAM select to the ROM O select, select on this ship. It should not affect the workings of the machine at all, as long as you don't have any other memory sources in this, um, in this computer. And I'm going to do that by pulling this ship and putting a wire from pin 15 to pin uh, 5. So it's going straight over here. So that's the next thing I'm going to test. This is going to give me a clue if this RAM select signal exists somewhere on the, in the circuit. And here I'm doing just what the, the doctor ordered. I'm uh, pulling the chip out of the sockets and I just take a simple one-threaded wire and connect it from pin 5 to 15 in this, uh, in this socket. And... This should just work by bypassing, and now I connect power and see what happens. And it's the same memory error as before. So, that was that for an experiment. This experiment has got me to think that um, the GAL chip must be the problem. And if you remember back a few episodes, we did reprogram the GALs, and they just verified fine. So either there has to be something wrong with my GAD file, I have used the wrong file, or whatever. Because this got to be something with the decoding, otherwise it has to be some signals that's not coming as they should to the GAL chip. 
Luckily, we did not put on the fuse, so that means that we can read back from the GAL chips uh, what's uh, contained within them and make our own GAD file and compare it with the one that we got from the project. Hopefully, this will reveal something for us. Yes, the file was read back without uh, issues, and I'm going to just uh, save it with uh, another um, name, so I'm not, uh, I'm sure not to overwrite the original uh, file. And afterwards, when I have done save this file, I'm going to try to make it easy to compare this one with the other new one. This is um, a picture you uh, know from before. This was presented uh, a few episodes back. And this is the three JED files that is supplied to uh, program to the GALS. And these are from the um, GitHub page of, of the project. This is still the original uh, file. And this is the file that is for the um, slot select. And as you can see, these files was downloaded and prepared about the same time. It was uh, the 21st of, of January this year. But when I read back this file from the device, what actually get uh, read back is what you see here. And here you can see they put their own header on this file when they um, read it back. So you can see that this is read back by the, um, the programming device. And this is, is not the same, and it's uh, not the same that was in this ship from before. And what is really strange, and, and this, is, this is beyond what I can believe what had happened, it's, it's totally strange, because when I did the reprogramming of the ships, I used the original files, and we had the same error before we programmed them and afterwards. So by then I did have some thoughts that it might be some of the GAL devices that had a fault, one or, or more. But I did program them again, and the same fault persisted. But when I now read back this, I see that I have different uh, data, and is this some fault from the, the ship? Is this some fault from some other time? I, I don't know. But it's, it's difficult to compare these as they are now on, on the screen, so... I have this picture made for um, doing just that. And in the background we have what's read back from the gold ship. And in front here I have the original data input from the original JED file. And I've just put it into an Excel spreadsheet. On the top file I've colored the zeros uh, green to make it easier and they stand out more as you can see the zeros below anyway. And you can see that there are no differences until you come to the line 13. But then there are numerous differences until you come to the end. And the bottom lines, they are still just programmed with ones, but they are not present at all. So there are huge differences in this file. The first half is the same, but the second half has big differences. So what are we going to do? I'm going to use the same ship and I'm going to program it again with the original file from um, this uh, January. And we are going to put it in and we are going to test to see if this make any changes to the behavior or of, of our MSX. Before I burnt this uh, again, I did a manual review of the, the files uh, byte for byte. And I also made a copy of the file that I should burn on, and I called it uh, another name, slot select, so I was sure that this file was not busy or taken, or at, that this was some damage on this file that caused this. And we loaded this file, and we program again, we took away the lock bit. Yeah, finished uh, programming. And we just um, take out the ship, harvest it from the, the socket, and we try it in our MSX. And to try to have as few unknown as possible, we are using the same ship. And of course we are using the same file, just a copy of this file. And we do everything like we did the first time. And it's time to um, connect the power. And... Behold, there is a picture. There is the, the CBIOS, 
and it goes further on to some Konami. It's probably a game or something. I don't know anything about how this should boot, and I'm not even sure what version of the BIOS I have in the socket uh, right now. I do know it's a CBIOS, but I don't know anything else about it. Of course we can't control anything, we don't have the keyboard attached and I don't have the, uh, any joysticks or anything else attached to this computer, so that will be it for testing as of now. Yes, finally we was able to make some progress on this uh, Omega MSX build. It has been a long journey and if you ask me, are you sorry for that this didn't work the first time? And the answer to this is no. I always love to dig into some of the details and the inner workings of stuff. And when things just work, you can't get the, yeah, the ability to challenge yourself to dig deeper into stuff. And then we can say, I should have discovered this earlier. I actually was in the right track several episodes ago when we reprogrammed the Gull ships. But whatever happened then, if there was some fault in the file, if there was some fault with the programmer, if there is some latent fault with this ship, we still don't know. Because I was doing everything exact the same way as I did now, and this result should have been the same. But it clearly was not. But I am proud of the ability to be able to track down these kind of errors. And when I measured all the, the signals around the, the memory chip for the, the ship select, I did discover that this ship was uh, never selected. And of course, if it's never selected, you can't detect that it is there. So the way we um, insulated the fault and tracked this back, I think that's a good result. I am glad that I was not able to try the Philips Diog boot room that I talked about because that would have led us into um, yeah, kind of a blind spot uh, here because the Gaul ships are really unique for the Omega MSX and they contain a lot of the glue logic that was on other MSXs, so the Philips will not have been able to point us in the right direction anyway, because they clearly don't have the same gull ship. Yes, they have the same functionality, so they would also have been able to say that we couldn't spot the memory, but they couldn't have helped us further along on the fault finding process. So that was uh, clearly a mistake. And I'm glad that we sold this uh, in the end. And there will be one more installment in this uh, series. Of course, I have to connect it uh, all together. And we have to try to run some, um, some software on this. So, I hope you uh, followed along till, till the end. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. I am still on the goal to reaching 1000... Subscribers uh, know before the 1st of June, but uh, the time <laughs> limits is, is not on my side. So please hit uh, like and subscribe. And if you know other that would be interested in this uh, content, please uh, like and share. So see you in the next one. And thank you for watching.